Kingdom Hearts 3 was a game in the making for almost 20 years. This game is about as major as Final Fantasy XV as it was to the fans of Final Fantasy. However, to people who are not invested in Kingdom Hearts, the series itself, this game is not as major as people who would be playing for the first time, or hardcore fans, or casuals who have heard the name, or rented the game and played it a couple times. This is pretty obvious, but my point is, you might have waited years and years for this game to come out, but I did not. I am going into this review with very limited backstory, very limited knowledge, and more of a casual player. For context, I played the first Kingdom Hearts and several side games, but never really got into it. So, you heard the news, this game is supposed to be a masterpiece, right? The question really remains though, is it really, or are games journalists once again overhyping this game like they've done with many others? Let's find out today. I don't like Kingdom Hearts. I don't like the story. I don't like the ham-fisted Disney franchises shoved into it. I don't like the price to understand all of it. So, if you came here to get a nice ego boost about your favorite series, you're going to be sorely disappointed. But, just because I dislike something doesn't mean that it's not a fully functioning, well-made product. This could be a 10 out of 10, I just don't like it myself. I am looking at this game through the five pillars of gaming. Graphics, gameplay, control, sound, and story. While the story is the biggest draw to this game, I'd like to note that the graphics themselves steal the show. They are absolutely gorgeous. If you've ever wanted to see more of a Disney movie, but didn't want to wait, say, 20 years for Toy Story 4, well, too bad, because you waited 20 years for this game. Okay, alright, alright, enough with the 20 year jokes. Realistically, this game provides a venue for the gorgeous show to be set. Whether the view is eye-popping colors, or dull black and night shadows, the graphics are outstanding. I really can't complain. The character models are on point, physics look good when they happen, when they occur, but unfortunately, I do have to slam the devs of this game. There's a default option, and a stable option for the PS4 Pro users, and to some extent, uh, there are options for basic Xbox One and PS4 users as well, because it's just a 30 FPS cap. Of course, that's the that's the good old stable option, but it's not because the frame pacing it's slightly jittery, it's uneven paced. 30 FPS isn't even 30 FPS. Remember, you pay three to four hundred dollars for a console and sixty dollars for this game, but you can't even get a stable 30 FPS 4K. I've oh, been proud though, it's not about graphics, I just want a good game. And you're right, okay? It's not, but when you pay around four to five hundred dollars for an experience you waited for 20 years, do you want that experience to be marred by developers who screw up 4K at 30 FPS or even screw up a clean 60 FPS at 1080p? For God's sakes, they called it stable mode. Stable mode. It's not stable. I shouldn't, I, I really shouldn't have to enable motion blur to cover up the jerking screens or improper 30 FPS caps. Running default mode means you are basically running the game uncapped, unlocked, okay? So that doesn't guarantee a 60 FPS depending on your console, but it is much better than a jerky 30 FPS. This runs on the Xbox One, PS4, Xbox One X, PS4 Pro as well. So, the better consoles will run the game better, obviously. But, the Xbox One, yes, the Xbox One X as well, works best, for whatever reason, comparatively to the PS4 and PS4 Pro. Uh, the Xbox One X natively puts out 1440p at 50 to 60 FPS. Or, with the PS4 Pro, you can disable some things and run the game at 1080p to get... 50 to 60 FPS as well. Some people say that that is better than the Xbox One X at 1440p. I don't know. Does all of this sound appealing to you? I shouldn't have to talk about this in a review. So why am I? Because I have to talk about it here because it's a big issue. You should 
not have to say, hey, I'm getting close to 60 FPS, right? You should not have to say, in a console game, uh, it, if you bought a FreeSync monitor and you had the Xbox One X, you could almost get a stable 60 FPS. And you should never have to say, boy, I wish my game ran at 30 FPS constantly if you have a console. That's the whole point of a console. So the graphics combined with the gameplay make beautiful game that just cannot maintain 60 FPS or a perfected 30 FPS. My recommendation is just buy the PC version. Oh, wait a minute. The irony of all this is that just like Zelda Breath of the Wild for the Nintendo Switch, okay, people have been able to emulate a more stable version of the game on their PCs uh, th than the console itself can provide, which is ridiculous to me. I mean, this is current gen stuff, and people are doing it better on PCs through emulation. Uh, but I'm not talking about the Switch. That's what's so ridiculous. The Switch is under power, and most of the games it runs it can even do 1080p 60 stable or 1080p 30 stable. I'm talking about the Xbox One X and PS4 Pro. Arguably way more powerful systems than the Nintendo Switch in the context if the developer knows what they're doing. Do you like action RPG games? Do you like games that have variables and change gameplay styles with an emphasis on RPG combat? Do you like to cast spells that look like Disney park rides? If that's you, then this game is for you. Basically, Sora is the main protagonist that can do all kinds of combat maneuvers. He can summon special characters, have specific world-based characters join in combat, and enter multiple combat modes. Okay, From Battle Mech to Tony Hawk Wannabe, you can battle in very many differentiated ways and that's nice if you don't like any of that cool you can still enjoy the game and just mash buttons because you can basically get through the game without using most of these sometimes you will be forced into a special scene or special battle mode for a specific area but for the most part you get through that and you go back to how you want to beat up the bad guys the gameplay consists of you visiting multiple disney themed worlds which is cool the idea is that bad things are happening from exterior points to this world and it's your job to beat the bad ace and restore the order of the said movie. From Frozen to Tangled, most of these worlds play out in a condensed form of the said movie with you taking the leads from the movie and solving the problems of the world. Uh, there are some fun space battles too. If you like flying a rocket ship, and then this is going to be real, real fun for you, okay? You'll probably enjoy it. Story? What story? Right, so the story itself leads more to the gameplay, okay? You again are just going through multiple Disney worlds, and Sora happens to have a bad case of amnesia, and he attempts to get his memories back by going to these said worlds. It works, of course it does, because that's, that's the vessel for the game. If you never played the series though, uh, the game gets tons of information to you to get you caught up, so that's nice, but here, I'll go ahead and explain it in less than 15 seconds. Ready? Time me. There's good and evil. Sora is good. Dark clothed people and Shadow are bad guys. Bad guys are bad. The bad guys use Disney villains to further their agendas. And the good guys get help from Disney heroes to save the day. At the end, Sora learns true power of friendship. Uh, it has an introspection moment. Good wins in the darkness is bad and beaten. And that's it. The end. Question mark, maybe? I don't know. Okay, I just saved you 15 hours cutscenes from the entire franchise explaining that. Now, the game is odd. When it comes to the story, there's multiple times where Sora confronts bad guys. And, I mean, you know, I, I gotta tell you, you know how they're bad? Because they're dressed all in black. Whoa, they're protos. Confirmed to be a racist, guys. Check about, get those headlines running from Kotaku and Polygon tomorrow. Uh, no, all right. Listen, the guys, they're all dressed in black. I mean it, like literally dressed in black with the occasional Chrono Trigger-esque hairstyle thrown in. Sora, while not a bloodthirsty murderer, sees these bad guys, know they're going to do bad things, and instead of destroying evil, he tries to redeem all of the bad stuff through the power of friendship and introspection. Sora, he's standing with his back to you. Pull Sephiroth here and put him in a wheelchair. There goes the final battle right there. How do you like that? One of your baddies is handicapable now. See, I'm not making fun of handicapped people. 
are handy capable. Look, the pacing of the story is really, really slow. The game takes its time getting Sora back to speed. And in turn, you, the player, learn that it's about the journey and not the end result. While I'm trying to remain spoiler free here, for the most part the story has some of what I would say satisfying conclusions, even though every world and every section you can kind of see these conclusions coming a mile away, you know exactly what's going to happen before it actually happens. The story actually takes on ideas of discussing what it means to be whole, friendship, and the power of what you do with your life, and themes that would suggest this game invokes a deeper thought. Children can enjoy the game, kids can enjoy the game, young teens, but you probably won't understand these ideas until you are much, much older. You get what I'm saying? So have no fear giving your kids these games. The point is they probably won't get the whole concept of it until they mature quite a bit more. I think that the story is probably the strongest and the weakest part of the game at the same time. You will either love it or hate it, but if you've seen any animes like Bleach, you will likely see the ending coming. Does it sound good though? This game did not cheap out on voice actors, music, or sound effects. Ah, it's just you. Hi, babe. It's just us? Even for you, that's cold. Don't forget, I can always turn up the heat! You guys are here. Sora, Donald, Goofy. You literally dropped in. Gotta say, I'm impressed. Okay, who's the new pest? Hey, now, that ain't no way to say hello, especially to your old friends. Disney is fully A-OK -okay with what devs have been doing with the series, and now you can see that because many of the themes, voices, dialogues, and sound effects are all identical and the movies that they correspond to, which is awesome. You're not in trouble? But I thought something odd must be going on. Ooh, let me see. I don't remember anything oddish, but perhaps I've forgotten. Sink, sink, sink. Well, uh, this is the gang. <laughs> that's Gogo. -Go. Mm. He's Wasabi. How you doing? And that's Honey Lemon. Hello there. You'd be forgiven for thinking that you were actually watching Hercules at one point in time. Again, there's deviations and liberties taken, but based upon the sound alone, you would be shocked. It sounds very, very similar. That said, this game does have weird moments where uh, people just grunt weirdly to express themselves instead of actually expressing themselves. Hmm. <laughs> Not sure why, but... Uh, you know, Japanese RPG, so you could compare it to Final Fantasy XV, where that happens also. Or in anime. Uh, Japan, folks. What? Don't be upset at me for pointing out a silly trope. This happens a lot. Most of the time, dialogue fits, but sometimes there's moments where the writing is like, you know, done by like an early college student, or at least it, it looks like it. I don't know. Maybe something was lost in translation. It's not as bad as Destiny is Destiny from the same company that brought you Final Fantasy 13, but uh, yeah, they did really well with this game. That's all I have to say about that. Control is an illusion, but here it's perfect. And when I address controls, I like to reference other games uh, that are glitched, broken, or have strange button placements, but here it's no problem with the controls. Hard to explain it any further, perfect is perfect. Uh, I had no problems with the controls, more on the gameplay sections, where sometimes I felt like I would slip. But again, that's probably attributed to the gameplay and not the controls themselves. So sorry that this section is so short, but there's not much else I can say about perfect. This is the culmination of many years of work, so for fans of the series, it's very worth it. I've heard nothing but praises from the community and casuals that seem to enjoy it as well. So again, it's a great game, and I highly recommend you go and buy it if you're a fan of it, but if you're new to the series, I would strongly suggest that you just buy the previous iterations, play them for a few weeks, maybe for a few months, and then wait for a price drop and buy this one. Save some cash, and you won't get a subpar experience, They'll probably patch the problems with the resolution and the stable frame rate, but if they don't, hey, at least you didn't pay full price. Simply put, you probably won't be let down with the series if everything you heard sounds good to you. 
I give this game an A. It looks and sounds and feels great with strange story and some odd resolution choices, but it's a Disney lover's dream. Now, for me, uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you would like and share it. Let people know uh, what you thought about this review with your input in the comment section down below. I could be completely wrong or off on many parts, and I would love to hear it from you. As for me, I'm still looking for some lost keys myself, and I gotta go find them. So if you would excuse me, I've been your host, Proto Mario. I'm signing out. Gotta go find those keys, guys. Otherwise, I'm gonna be in big trouble. Won't be able to start my car. Won't be able to leave. Won't be able to do anything. Wonder if I could turn one of them into a blade or something. Yeah, well, only time will tell. So I'll see you guys in the next video, and I greatly appreciate you watching this one. As always, good gaming, God bless, and I'll see you next time.